In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to correctly color grade your Vivo X200 Pro 4K log footage, all within DaVinci Resolve for free. And at the end, I'm also going to show you how you can use a free downloadable preset at the bottom of this video to get the same exact effect. Now, before we figure out how to color grade the log footage on this, let's quickly look at how you can actually shoot log videos with the X200 Pro. For this, open up your camera app and then swipe over to video. Tap on the little settings bar on the top left and tap on log. Now, this will flatten and wash out your image, which is perfectly fine. That's exactly how you want it. So you get more dynamic range and more color depth. If you tap on this toggle, it'll turn on a preview for you so you can kind of estimate what the final result can look like. This is actually a very useful preview LUT so you can kind of figure out how to really light up your shot because log is really washed out. It's hard to really expose for it. But for me personally, I like going into the pro video mode to shoot all my videos and I'll tell you why. Swipe over to more and then tap on pro. Make sure it's set to video and then tap on log right there. Additionally, this also gives you settings like focus speaking and exposure feedback, which is definitely a pro setting you should have. On top of the fact that you can actually control your ISO and your shutter speed to really dial in the right settings. Now shooting at the lowest ISO is always the best option, but the lowest ISO you get on the X100 Pro is actually 800 ISO. Now once you've shot all of your videos, it's time to jump into the color grade. So let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. All right, we're now here within DaVinci Resolve where I'm gonna do basically all of the color grading. Create a new timeline and for the format and project settings, we're gonna change this to 4K resolution, obviously not in vertical, and then the FPS is gonna be 29.9. These are the clips that I'm going to be working with today, all shot on the Vivo X200 Pro, starting with the intro clip that you guys saw at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to quickly hop into my color page, and this is basically where all of the edit is going to take place. To start this off, I'm going to create the three basic nodes, which is exactly what I did when color grading the Apple ProRes log footage. So we're going to create three serial nodes here, the first one being base, the second being CST, and the final one being LUT. So that's my starting ground that I use for all color grading videos. But I'm gonna be showing you two different ways to color grade here. One is going to be with a free version for which you don't need to pay anything at all, it's all completely free. And the second version is with the paid version of DaVinci Resolve with some effects that we're gonna be using to make the video even more cinematic. So while you're in here, tap on your CSD node, click on effects and search for color space transform. That's the one right there. Drop that on onto your CST. Unfortunately, Vivo doesn't really tell you exactly which one you're supposed to be using. So I actually went through the whole list to see which one fits perfectly for what I was shooting. And this is the one that works best for me. I may be completely wrong, but this works for me. So I'm gonna share that with you guys. So in your color space, you're gonna select P3 D65. And in your input gamma, you can pick one of two. One is the RE Log C3. This one works really, really well. And you can see that apply right away. Converts it to Rec. 709 in a very nice looking way. But the second one you can also try is the S-Log3 actually, which is what I'm shooting on right now, the Sony camera. So both will give you very good results. But for this video, we're gonna stick to the RE Log C3. Now with just that, you can see the before and after. This is basically converting it from Log to Rec. 709 and it's done that in an instant. And you could basically stop right here if you want it. But obviously this video is not a conversion video, it's a color grading video. So I'm gonna show you how you can take a shot like that and make it look nicer. So now we click on our base node, we can come into our primaries or color wheels and adjust the temperature or tint like we need to change the tint a little bit greener because it seems like it's a bit too magenta in this video. Next, I'm going to go into my curves and add in some contrast. So I'm going to click the three dots, editable splines, and this allows me to get that really nice natural looking curve. So I'm going to create one dot at the top and it'll create a stem for me to pull. Do one at the top, one at the bottom, creating a smooth gradient or an S curve. And you can see that really compresses in the contrast really well. Next, what I'm going to do is go into my primaries one more time and bring up the shadows slightly to bring back details and drop the highlights slightly to retain details in the highlight spots. And I like to increase my color boost by three and my saturation by 55. This adds that punch to the image. So here it is before the correction and after the correction. Of course, you can see that I changed the hue of it a little bit, made it a little bit greener and I made the colors pop a bit more. Now with the correction, you're pretty much done color correcting the video from log to Rec. 709. But now it's time to grade the video. If you're lazy, you can just use a LUT and then reduce the opacity, which is exactly what I'll show you. So go into your LUTs, find your favorite LUT. For me, it's the Joker LUT. Drop that on to your LUT node, but make sure you drop the key output to 0.45 or 0. like basically 40% so that it looks a little bit more neutral. So now if I turn off and on the LUT, you can see it looks like it's been color graded. And that's your basic log to Rec. 709 correction. Of course, there's more in-depth ways to color grade your video instead of using a LUT, but I've done a completely different video on that, so go check that out right up here somewhere as well. Uh, but let's proceed to shaping your shot. So in this case, for example, I don't like how bright the left side of my image is, right over there. This section looks too bright to me and I wanna balance it out. So for this, I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna call this shape. With this node selected, I'm gonna come down to my power window right over there and click on gradient. 
So basically what I want to do is balance the left side with the right side of the image. The left is way too bright right now. So I'm going to drag this onto the side and spread out the feather of this so that it looks more natural and not harsh. So if I tap on Shift H, I can actually see exactly which parts will be affected by my edit later. Shift H again to disable it. Now what I'm going to do is come into my primaries and I'm going to drop the gamma by quite a bit. And you can see I keep going here and now we're getting that balance from the left and right, which looks a lot better already. So you can see the before and the after, how it really brings attention to me as the subject. Now next, I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to call this glow. I like doing this in almost all of my videos because I have a lot of lights in my videos in the background. So what we're going to do is create a glow, go to effects, search for glow and drop that onto the node. Now you can adjust the shine threshold and also the spread for this to adjust the values where they look nice for you. The spread will make it look more spread out and bloom effect like while the shine threshold controls which parts are going to be shining. So for me, this looks pretty good. Turning that off and on, very, very nice. Again, full in-depth video, check out another video on that. So this was our original log footage and that's our final graded footage, all done completely free using DaVinci Resolve. So that's the free way to color grade from log to rex and nine using the X100 Pro using all the free tools built into DaVinci Resolve and anyone can do this. But now let's move on to the paid ways to really make your footage look a lot more cinematic. Starting off by adding a little bit of halation, which is one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna add a new parallel node to my glow node and call it halation. Go to your effects, search for halation and drag that on. This is what it will look like if you adjust the settings correctly and you get that little glow fall off both with the glow and halation. Turning these off and on, you can see it adds that really nice sort of diffused look to the image. The next effect I'm gonna create is background blur and separation to add that fake depth of field effect to make it look more fancy and like it was shot with an expensive lens. So for this, I'm gonna create a new node and call this blur. Next, we're gonna head over to Magic Mask and make sure quality is set to better. Now, using the plus selection tool, start drawing around your subject. This can be very rough. Then alt click and draw on the outside of your subject to select the opposite of your subject, which is the background. Next, I'm gonna tap on Shift H to see my selection, make sure everything looks nice and perfect. And then I'm gonna invert the mask because again, we wanna affect the background for the blur, not the subject itself. Next, what I'm gonna do is tap on the two arrow marks right over there to start tracking my footage. Now, this is pretty quick depending on your laptop speed or how long your footage is, but for me, it's pretty much done. Shift H again to disable it. You're not gonna see any difference yet, but that's because we haven't added the blur yet. Head over to your blur and sharpen. And then as you increase this number, the blur is gonna go up. So that's the maximum blur. Obviously never do that. That looks absolutely terrible. Uh, but you can bring it up to a decent number. I like sticking to 0.6 or 0.65. That to me looks pretty natural. And there you go, before and after the blur, you can actually see it makes a pretty subtle but really nice difference by adding that fake depth effect. But truthfully, I've been using the film look a lot more than this traditional method. So I'm gonna quickly show you how I do that. I'm gonna get rid of the glow inhalation nodes and I'm gonna create a new node after my blur and I'm gonna call this film look. Then go into your effects and search for a film look creator. Now, as soon as you add that on, it adds a very, very harsh sort of effect, but we're gonna fix that, no worries yet. So go to your presets and switch to the 35 mm. Obviously this is depending on your taste. I really like the 35 mm. Then you can go to your film look blend and drop that down to 50%. Next, I'm gonna adjust the skin bias to make sure my skin tones look correct and go into my color settings and adjust some of these settings just to match my shot here. There's no one answer for this. This will change completely depending on your shot. But for this shot, I'm just gonna adjust the fade levels, the contrast levels, and I'm pretty happy with what this is looking like so far. Next, if we go down a little bit, you can actually see something called split tone. This actually applies the color grade within the color grade, if that makes sense. So it's applying warmth to your highlights and cool tones to your shadows. Make sure you click on vignette and enable it. And again, you can see it really pulls in that focus if I turn it off and on, drawing the attention of the viewer to the subject. Now, the reason we deleted the halation and glow from before is because this has this built in. So under halation, make sure it's enabled, increase the amount and radius, and you can see the effect it has is a lot more subtle than the halation effect on the outside. I like this a lot more. Next, Next, go into Bloom. Same thing as Glow, it does it in a more subtle way. And I think this looks a lot nicer to make your skin tones look a little bit more smooth. Next up, Grain. I love Grain because it adds that film look. So we're gonna enable Grain at 35 mm and reduce the amount to a little bit, maybe 0.17. Make sure you turn off Flicker and turn off Gate Weave. And under Global Blend, now if I turn this down, you can see how it really kicks in that film look. Looks a lot more nice and 
Honestly, it just looks like it was shot on a film camera. I absolutely adore this effect. I think it's the best addition to DaVinci Resolve and I pretty much use it in almost all my videos. So that's our before and that is our after the color grade. And I think this is looking very, very nice. Now I promised you guys that I was gonna give you a free downloadable power grade that you can apply to all your videos shot in log on the X200 Pro. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here and show you guys how to do it. So if you go in to any of these footages which were all shot on the X200 Pro, go into your color tab, you can actually click on the gallery and power grade. There I have the X200 Pro, which you're gonna download from the link in the description from my website. And then as you drag and drop that on, it instantly color grades it from log to rec 709. Obviously, this is color correcting it. The grading is totally up to you. If you wanna add a lot, you can add it. If you don't wanna add a lot, you don't need to add it. Uh, and you can add your grade nodes after the CST, but you can see simple drag and drop and I can apply this to basically any video shot on the X200 Pro and it'll look great straight out of that. Like I don't need to do much here because these are shot in proper exposure. The only thing I would, for example, change is in certain shots, I could make them brighter. So for example, here, I could go into my base node, increase the HDR a little bit so that I can bring the exposure up. Here, I could add more contrast using the curves and then you can get really technical with it. So for example, here, I can create a new node and then I can create a power grid just around the eye feather it and then track this forward and then I can increase the exposure and saturation on the eye iris part itself and you can actually see now it's going to track that footage and it adds that depth effect even more looking incredible now I think the videos look incredible on here the only downside I would say is that the x200 pro can only shoot at a minimum ISO of 800 which isn't really convenient especially when you're shooting outdoors because uh, it's just gonna be too bright and then your only two options are to put an ND filter on top of this which is really hard because this is a massive camera module or you have to crank up your shutter speed which means you're not getting that 180 degree shutter angle and your shutter speed just won't match to give you that cinematic motion blur. I've already done two full form videos using this about the macro and the telephoto camera on here. So make sure you check those videos out as well. They're gonna be up here somewhere. But yeah, video performance, crazy. Now I've personally been shooting 4K ProRes log on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and 16 Pro Max ever since it came out and I've absolutely adored that. So getting that on an Android phone with a beast of a camera like on the X200 Pro is amazing. And I'm gonna be making a lot more videos, log videos and color grading with this in the future. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and also subscribe here on YouTube for more more long form content like this. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that thumbs up as well. See you guys again in the next video. Until then, take care.